coming out. I'm going to go ahead and start. Um, I do think there will be some others coming. And um, my name is Ellen A. Strum, and I am the Director of Teacher Training here at Groves Academy. So I <clears throat> work with teachers here on the faculty at Groves, as well as do professional development workshops and training in the Wilson reading system and the Wilson other Wilson language programs. So it's really nice to be here and I'm particularly excited tonight to talk about reading fluency because it it's it's one of it tends to be one of the one of the neglected um, I wouldn't say maybe neglected we're paying more and more attention but it's one of the last uh, areas of reading instruction to 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 get the attention um, it, it, because it turns out that fluency really involves all other areas of reading to actually it's sort of the end result of all the other strands of reading so tonight what I'd like to do is to uh, <clears throat> I am going to talk about strategies and uh, programs and various things you can do to Im to support fluency and improve it but I in order to do that I think it's important to understand the cognitive and language processes that are involved in fluent reading and uh, um, that will I believe lead to a better understanding of some of the interventions and other supportive activities to uh, enhance and encourage fluent reading. Uh, we need to look at what the barriers are to fluent reading because they're not all, it's not a singular difficulty. It's caused by any number of factors. And then there are some there's been some incre uh, an increased amount of research lately of studies on fluency and particularly on what are the practices that we should be doing to improve reading fluency in our in our students and so I want to look at those what's because we used to think that we should do one set of things and we're learning now that in fact we're kind of evolving into a better understanding of what will help students be better readers in general. And then we'll look at some classroom practices and I will tell you about a very recent study on <clears throat> improving reading rate and my own experience working with a student here at Groves which is kind of fun and, uh, and I'm been very pleased at how things have worked out. So basically, uh, reading fluency, I should have probably asked you, what is your understanding of flu reading fluency? In fact, I will do that now, just on the screen. Okay. Uh, somebody want to volunteer, what's reading fluency exactly? The rate at which you read? It involves speed. Yep, the speed with which you read. What, uh, anything else? Accuracy. Accuracy, speed and accuracy. And that has generally been the way we've defined it. It's accurate and speedy reading. But it turns out it's really a whole lot more than that. And it's our deeper understanding of that that I think will help us be more effective in supporting our uh, students, those with reading dis disorders or dyslexia, as well as those who come from more impoverished language backgrounds, which really limits them as well. So <clears throat> it is the ability to read with speed and accuracy, but it is the result of processing sounds accurately. And so that involves processing speed and uh, how quickly we can process sounds and also retrieve linguistic information like meanings, associating words with meanings and, uh, and other uh, background knowledge, things about the word other than just the sound. And then it also involves our executive functions in particular working memory, which is our ability to 
uh, retrieve information very quickly, hold it in mind, and use it to solve the problem or learn something new. We'll talk a little more about that as time as we go through. But basically, uh, what fluency does for us is that it gives us time to think about what we're reading. Without fluency, it's very difficult to have, to understand what we're reading about and to be able, and not only to understand what we're reading about, but ultimately to think about it and create new thoughts, develop our own thoughts about what we're reading. So, um, here's a, uh, here's a commonly uh, used, commonly shown slide about the strands of reading. Our head of school here at Groves, John Alexander, gives, uh, gives a whole workshop on the five strands of reading and he does a wonderful job of explaining how all these factors go together in order to, uh, in order to create a fluent reader. But basically, I mean, and the metaphor is if you think of it as a um, as the strands of a rope that get woven together, what we're, and the end point is skilled reading, going into this, first of all, there's word recognition, leaving aside any meaning, where we have to be able to be aware and process the sounds accurately, uh, to make the connection between a sound and a symbol, which is what we call the alphabetic principle. And to be able to do that very quickly so that we can read really, we can read words very quickly and recognize them. So we, it's, we want to go from, <clears throat> we want to go from the stage where we have to think about every sound in that in a word, shh, uh, to put it together, blend it together, to read it, to the point where we've had we've seen it enough times we can just say shop and go on. So it's a, a very um, and that's the that's the task of early emerging readers is to make that transition, that leap from recognizing the sounds and symbols that are in words being able to blend them together and then achieve an automaticity or an automatic uh, recognition of them. Now, that's enough right there, but then we also have to look at language comprehension because actually the point of reading is not to be able to decode the words, but to understand, uh, but to get knowledge and uh, uh, information out of it. So. We bring to language comprehension background knowledge, our experiences, things we know about words, um, all kinds of, of, uh, of understanding and vocabulary knowledge and so on. And uh, we bring that. And then we have to also understand language structures, structures like syntax, the fact that you know, words go together in a certain order and there's grammar and punctuation because all of that goes into understanding meaning too. We have to have verbal reasoning so we can figure out when there's an inference or a metaphor or what that actually means, as well as just knowledge of print, you know, uh, concepts, print, um, printed word, patterns and things of that sort. All of that has to weave together so, and so that the uh, emerging reader has to take all these things and gradually weave them together to the point where they become increasingly automatic and increasingly strategic before we get to skilled reading. So anybody tell, who tells you that reading is uh, natural and will just happen all by itself uh, <clears throat> is misinformed. <laughs> so 